Meeting Nelson Mandela is kind of a strange experience because he's so iconic. It's, it's sort of like, you know, seeing the Mona Lisa for the first time. His presence is very powerful. I mean, people talk about charisma all the time. It's way overused. There's something charismatic about his very presence, even before he opens his mouth. Who will reach the goal of liberating the black people of this country within our lifetime. His philosophy was that South Africa was a country for black and white, and that if he was going to be the leader of this new South Africa, of this multiracial South Africa, he had to hide any kind of bitterness or resentment that he had against his white oppressors. He had terrible wounds and bitterness about it, but, but he understood intellectually that he could never, ever, for one instant, let that show. And in fact, he had to go way more than halfway to meet people. He understood the symbolism of modern politics, which is why he, he succeeded. I'm on fire. I believe that prison made the Nelson Mandela we know today. Prison was the crucible for creating that man who, who walked out of prison in 1990 and became a world historical figure. The young man who went into prison was hot-headed, tempestuous, self-involved, not anything like the Nelson Mandela who emerged 27 years later, and, and prison burned all of those excesses away. I think his legacy ultimately is the spirit of reconciliation and the spirit of generosity. That is, that is what he will eventually be known for. I mean, his life followed this mythic arc where he had this period where he was away from the world and, and suffered this grievous punishment and then came back with a spirit of generosity and forgiveness. I think that's what he will be remembered for, that basically there's no political handicap, there's no political wound or insult that you can't get over if you, if you believe in reconciliation and democracy. And I think that is the, the message that he leaves behind more than anything else.